Hello everyone, a greeting in the name of God Almighty. My name is Apostle Newton Silas and today I have a very interesting video to react to. It says, how do you loop in Jannah? And this video was done by Dr. Omar Suleiman. I believe that this is going to be a very interesting video in this time of um, Ramadan. So guys, if today happens to be the first time of you checking out my channel, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on my Facebook and Instagram. And if you have any video you want me to react to, don't forget to drop it at the comment section and I'm going to check it out. So guys, before we get out to the video, I'm a theologian and I make this video not to discredit anyone's religion. This is basically for educational purposes and I believe that at the end of this video, we all are going to learn from it. So guys, let's get down to this video and check this out when you speak How of the day of judgment agenda. it's a lot of darkness and only our good deeds are lighting the way for us we're desperately trying to find light and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lights up the parts of our bodies that were engaged in good deeds now that's the day of judgment when it's dark but paradise on the other hand has no darkness so what happens to all that light that was on our bodies when we no longer need to get through the darkness when we enter into jannah that nur, the light becomes added zina, which is beauty, on the very same parts of your body. So while you no longer need the light to see, the beauty of those good deeds will remain on you forever for everyone in paradise to see. Now some are going to be more beautiful in some ways than others, but all will be beautiful in Jannah and not feel any deficiency of beauty because paradise is a place where no one feels left out. The Prophet ﷺ described that our faces on the Day of Judgment are as bright as our Iman, as our faith. So the first batch of people to enter Paradise, he said وسلم, that they have faces like the full moon. And the Prophet ﷺ was described as having a face like the full moon in this life. Now our forms in Jannah are going to be very different and it's hard to perceive and appreciate. The Prophet Sallallahu said that the people of Paradise will be raised in the form of Adam Alayhi salam, 33 years old, with no hair on their bodies, and their eyes will be smeared with kuhud. Now obviously, hair on the body in this life is not necessarily unappealing, especially when you think about, for example, the beards of men. But remember, Jannah is different and our bodies are entirely different once we enter into that realm. Some of the descriptions even sound like translucent beings, but there's a clear, beautiful definition to the bodies at the same time. As for our height, the Prophet ﷺ said, everyone who enters into paradise will be in the form of Adam السلام, who is 60 cubits tall. So that's like 90 feet tall or about 30 meters. So when you speak of height, we're all going to have a height that is unknown to this world, but it's pleasing and we're all the same size in Jannah. We're all also the same age. And the Prophet ﷺ said that the age of the people of paradise is again, 33 years old. Now in this life, this age is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes as Balagha ashuddahu, which is your peak age. But even then, 33 in Jannah is not like 33 in this dunya because there's imperfection with every age in this dunya. But in Jannah, the point is, is that we're all at a middle age to our joy and to our delight. So we enter into Jannah with the height of Adam alayhi salam, the beauty of Yusuf alayhi salam, and the age of Isa alayhi salam, longing for the companionship of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And of course, there's a well-known funny narration about the age of the people of paradise, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam jokes with an older woman about her entrance into Jannah. So this old woman says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, ask Allah to enter me into paradise. And the Prophet Sallallahu says, but old women don't go to Jannah. So she started to cry and the Prophet Sallallahu said, no, no, I mean that no woman enters paradise while she is old. Because Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Inna ansha'na hunna insha'a faj'alna hunna abkara uruban atraba. That we made them a new creation, young again, loving and equal in age. Now is this ayah talking about the women from paradise, which are the special creation known as Hur al -ayn, or the maidens of paradise? Or is this speaking about the believing women when they enter into paradise? So the answer to that question is that every description of the physical beauty of the Hur al -ayn applies to the believing women as well, but there is more. 
In one narration, Umm Salama radiallahu anha asked the Prophet sallallahu she said, Ya Rasulullah, Nisa'u dunya afdal am hur al O Messenger of Allah, are the believing women of this world better or are the maidens of paradise? And the Prophet sallallahu said, Bal nisa'u dunya afdalu min al hur al he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, rather the women of this world are better than the maidens of paradise in the same way that the outer lining of the garment is more beautiful than the inner lining. So the garment on the outside with its decoration and beauty over the garment on the inside. And Umm Salama radiallahu anha responds and she says, Wabima dhaak ya Rasulullah. And on what basis is that, O Messenger of Allah? And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because of their prayers, because of their fasting, and because of their worship of Allah. So the believing women who enter paradise from this world will have the beauty of their creation and the beauty of their ibadah. They'll have the beauty of their worship and righteousness added to the beauty of their creation and paradise. And Ibn Abbas said, if a woman of paradise was to show her wrist between the heavens and the earth, the whole creation would be infatuated by her beauty. And if she showed her veil or her garment, it would steal the light of the sun. And if she exposed her face, its beauty would illuminate everything between the heavens and the earth. So our beauty in Jannah, women and men, is more than this world could handle. And we will all be more beautiful than anyone ever seen on the face of this earth. Now, it's not just beauty, but also the functionality of the body that's different. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the people of paradise will eat and drink, but they will not blow their noses, nor will they need to relieve themselves or digest their food or urinate. So we have no excretions from the body in Jannah. No urine, no mucus, no menses. So how does the food and the drink come out? Well, remember the mechanics of Jannah and the hows are different. So the realm of possibility is entirely different. The Prophet ﷺ said that we would sweat and burp musk that inspires us to glorify Allah, not out of heat or discomfort or indigestion, but only in ways that are pleasing and pleasant. And what do we do in this world when we sneeze? We say Alhamdulillah naturally. And in Jannah, you naturally will praise Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala with every one of those. And some of the scholars said we had to come to this earth to use the bathroom because Adam and Eve ate from a tree that moved their stomachs in a strange way. So treat this earth like a bathroom stop and continue on your journey back to Jannah. So why do we even have organs or do we have organs in Jannah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Some of the scholars said we probably don't have organs. And if we do have organs, then certainly not the ones that we had in this dunya. But there is a level of being described again as transparent beings. So for example, the Prophet some said you could see the bone marrow of a woman in paradise. And that doesn't sound particularly beautiful here, but it will all make sense when we get there, inshallah ta'ala. Even our communication, how do we talk to each other? Do we all speak Arabic? The famous quote that the language of the people of paradise will be Arabic isn't a hadith, but some scholars said that at that point, perhaps we all know and speak Arabic. And Allah knows best, but we will be able to communicate in ways that we can understand and be understood. And there's some form of common language amongst the people of paradise. But reflect for a moment, on the connection between our bodies in Jannah and how we used our bodies in dunya. You're asked about your body and how you consumed it on the Day of Judgment. And the wounds of the Shuhada are flowing with beauty as they once did with blood on the Day of Judgment. And it's all beautiful scented perfume. And in dunya, you asked Allah to beautify your khuluq, being your character as He beautified your khalq, being your creation. Allahumma kama ahsanta khalqi fahassin khuluqi. Oh Allah, as you have beautified my outside, beautify my inside. And now in Jannah, your creation is beautified because of your character. And in that is a sign that if you focus on your inner beauty in this life, Allah will beautify your outer beauty in the next in ways you could never imagine. Ya ayyatuhan نفس المطمئنة ارجعي إلى ربك راضية مرضية فادخلي في عبادي وادخلي جنتي That's a very interesting uh, video by uh, 
Suleiman uh, Omar, you know. <laughs> I just love this video, of course. This is called to self um, reflection for you to just reflect on yourself. Ask yourself, you know, same questions because when you look at this, for you to be able to uh, to talk about uh, how do you look in general, it means that you have already made right choice already. Okay, it's not that they are calling you for you to go and accept God and then worship Him. No, it means that you have already accepted Him. But then we're trying to like assume, how do we think we're gonna look when we are there? That's where it's trying to call. It means that you are already worshiping God, you are already serving God, you already believe in God already. That's why you should be thinking about it. Of to someone who is not even believing in God in the first place, why do you have to start seeing yourself internal? It's not possible until you accept God already into your life. That is when you start having this presumption. When you look at um, some people here or not, of course, some people live the life they want to live because they do not even know where they are going to. Because if you know where you are going to, you tend to walk in some certain way. For instance, you are going to a place and the place is far. The rate in which you start moving will be faster, right? Because of why you know that you need to spend some couple of hours to get there. But maybe probably where you are going to is just like some three or five minute work. Of course, you can be walking slowly because you know where you are walking to is very it's close by so you can walk the way you want to walk right but if you know that the place you are going to is like three or four hours and then you have to use your leg you tend to walk faster so that's why you see people get indulged in some of the things here or not one they don't even know where they are going to they don't know their destination for if they know their destination that will make them to be able to move faster right but because they do not know see they tend to move at a particular speed in which and they feel is okay for them and that's why some don't even care because they just feel like their final destination is here or not they just believe that whatever it is god bless them they just live their life here they died and that's it some don't even believe that there is afterlife they don't even believe in it they don't believe in afterlife they just believe that whatever you do here or not try to be moral in everything you do be good to people be good to neighbors and that's it and if you die that's it some don't believe that when you die, of course, your soul will be resurrected and therefore a judgment day you will be judged depending on your deed here on how to determine to whether you are making it to paradise or to Jahana. Some do not know. And that's why in this time of Ramadan, give uh, the Muslim opportunity for them to pray to God. It's been expected that whatever you must have done, when you pray to God at this time of Ramadan, that God is going to forgive you. A very interesting video. And I love it and I believe that some of you also enjoyed this video. So guys, this is the end of my video. If you like my reaction, you should like, share and subscribe. And if you have any video you want me to react to, don't forget to drop it at the comment section and I'm going to check it out. So guys, remain blessed.